Where the Isle of Wight goes, Britain follows. Or so England's health secretary said. Their much vaunted NHS built contact tracing app, trialled here on the Isle of Wight, was hailed critical by its NHS developers just two days ago. Now the operating model underpinning it has been abandoned after months in development. I will not recommend people to download the app until I'm confident that that's the right thing to do because, in down, because I'd be asking people to download the app and then to self-isolate if it tells you to. And that is, a, that is a big thing to ask of people. Mit minimalem Aufwand, dafür aber mit maximalem Datenschutz. Germany, which launched its tracing app this week, did a similar U-turn, favoring a Google-Apple operating system. But it's not the model which the UK government first envisaged giving the NHS a better insight into the spread of the virus. And an app launch once billed for mid-May could now be as late as the autumn, if at all. Well, the government said that this uh, app was uh, absolutely necessary. Now they're saying it's not necessarily at all. And it looks like we're going to be waiting an eternity for it. Portsmouth in the distance. And here, the Isle of Wight, where this app has been trialled. I've just downloaded it. Help the NHS stop the spread of coronavirus in the UK. The idea of the app is to record when smartphone users are close to each other. Using Bluetooth signals to gauge how near they are and for how long, the app will record an identifier for other phones it's been in contact with. Then if one user falls ill, data from their phone would be uploaded to a central server. The server would look up the identifiers for the people they were close to and send out an alert to the phones of people who could have been infected. Of the 80-odd thousand people that could download it, um, our figures indicate we've won over 53,000 people. So it's a pretty good return, actually. As in the Isle of Wight trial, matching occurs on a central government server. Now the focus shifts to a so-called decentralised approach, considered by some to offer greater data privacy safeguards, where matching takes place instead on users' phones. It's a bit disappointing. It took so long for, for the government to, to get to this point. The UK got stuck. So the UK found it was trying to use workarounds and loopholes in Apple and Google's system as it stood to try and get phones to talk to each other. The depth of the technical problems behind the NHS app, long played down by its developers, were laid bare today. It's emerged that the app could at times pick up just 4% of other iPhones. Astonishingly, I've been told it was only recently that they discovered the full extent of this fundamental flaw. Italy is another country adopting the Apple Google version. UK officials insist they've been running parallel tests on this now preferred decentralized system, but claim they found flaws in its ability to measure distance accurately, which rules out a quick British launch. This is a global challenge, that what we've done in really rigorously testing both our own COVID-19 app and the Google Apple version is demonstrate that none of them are working sufficiently well enough to actually be reliable to determine whether any of us should self-isolate for, for two weeks. That's true across the world. The UK government says it's working with Google and Apple to address these challenges. But even if a technological solution is found, questions around the privacy of data and a regulatory framework will no doubt persist. As also why it took quite so long for this moment of reckoning for Whitehall's flagship app, once considered so central to its pandemic response, to come. Andy Davis reporting from the Isle of Wight. Well, we asked to speak to someone from the government, but for the 11th day in a row, no one was available. We also wanted to ask a question at the Downing Street press conference, but for the seventh time in a row, we were not granted that opportunity. Now, a short time ago, I spoke to the Conservative Chair of the Science and Technology Committee, Greg Clark. I began by asking him why it's taken three months for the app to be up and running. Well, it's taken a long time to, to develop the, uh, the technology and then to test it. Um, and other countries have been doing the same. Um, and actually, many of them have come up with the same results. But three months is an awful lot of time to waste, you know, at this very crucial juncture, isn't it? 
Well, you say wasted. There's no country that's really cracked this. Um, in Norway, for example, they've just withdrawn their app. In Singapore, which was one of the, the front runners, they found that the take up was very low. Um, so most countries have found that actually it's the human contact that is the, the most effective. The biggest problem uh, is, is public confidence. Are you going to accept a message to isolate yourself for two weeks on the basis of a message that comes through uh, an app? Um, and the experience we, my committee was told uh, in the Isle of Wight was that people actually wanted to speak to someone. They wanted to be persuaded and wanted to be convinced that this wasn't just a, uh, a kind of glitch in the technology, that they really had been exposed and ought to isolate. But what does it say for public confidence? What does it do to public confidence if the government changes its mind on crucial issues over and over again? Well, on this, I think it is much better to to change its mind, it's to say not to roll out nationally something which technically uh, is problematic. I think actually for a, uh, for, a, for a government of any country to have the confidence to say, right, we're not going to proceed if it's not working, actually is, is pretty standard in tech as it happens. Should we just forget about the app altogether? I think it's worth... Uh, from from what I see I and mean, the evidence that the committee's uh, taken, the the app can or an app can uh, develop can acquire useful data, but it's probably best used to support uh, manual contact tracing. And would you have the confidence to say that even if this app or any other app doesn't work, right, that we can still carry on unlocking the lockdown and return to some degree of normality? Uh, so the, the the assessment as to how we uh, unlock the lockdown, uh, as it were, uh, was never and should never have been solely dependent on uh, on the performance of an app, and I don't believe it should. But it's, it was a large, that was a large part of it. You know, Matt Hancock said this is a fundamental part of our strategy to ease the lockdown, and it's not worked. Well, I think with the benefit of hindsight, I think there was too much weight um, perhaps placed on a technological solution and perhaps insufficient on having a, uh, a network of, uh, of people that were doing the contact tracing. Uh, that's important. But so have been the other measures. And the, 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 the requirements to, uh, to release some of the, the lockdown uh, has to come from the, the prevalence uh, of the, the disease in the, the country. But what we're finding in this country, and actually around the world, including in the Asian countries that have done best, uh, is that human contacts uh, tracers uh, seem to be empirically the most effective. Greg Clark, thank you very much indeed. Thanks very much, Matt. Latest figures from what Boris Johnson has called a world-beating NHS test and trace system also came out today. Our health and social care editor, Victoria MacDonald, has been taking a look at them. So, Victoria, is it world-beating? Not quite, John. Uh, the fact is, we're told repeatedly that the app was the cherry on the cake and that the human test and trace system was the cake itself. Well, I don't mean to be mean, but it is pretty half-baked at the moment. For a start, there are considerably more infections in the population than we are, than are entering the test and trace system. When you get into that test and trace system, we have found today that 90% of the contacts of those people who have been tested, uh, who have themselves been contacted, well, then we just don't know what's happened to them. We've talked to a lot of local authorities, and they're saying they're not picking up all those numbers, so they're just disappearing into the ether. And let's not forget that we're still not getting the numbers of individuals tested. Tomorrow is the 100th day since the World Health Organization declared a pandemic. And other countries do seem to have got their systems up and working, and yet we are still struggling. Well, now, where the system is working, we've seen some small outbreaks unidentified, or identified, rather. And what do we know about them? 
Well, uh, so that I'm not entirely negative on this, yes, we were told today that there has been an outbreak in Kirklees and Yorkshire and that they are working on that and another outbreak in Leicester, and this is all down to the test and trace system. Now, this is in England. In Wales, there is an outbreak in a poultry factory. 58 cases have been identified. NHS Wales, uh, sorry, Public Health Wales has uh, started looking at this and set up a testing station. This is a factory that supplies M&S and KFC and we're told we will get more details in the coming days.